Hey again, everybody. Just thought I'd do a quick update on uh, the, I'm working on the table for the universal pillar tool and I've got it in the lathe here. You're on a little pedestal on the tailstock of the lathe. So let me adjust the view here. I'm probably have to swing the camera around a little bit. Sorry about my finger getting in the way there. Yeah, let me just do that. So I've got the table in the four jaw chuck. You can probably see pretty well how nicely that edge cleaned up using the angle grinder. Also, I did touch it up with a file just to make sure that there was no razor edge on here and um, got it all cleaned off pretty well. And I've been using, this is a Noga indicator holder and I really like these things. If you're curious about them, look at ABOM 79's uh, videos. He uses the Noga all the time. That's I always hated this part of the setup. I don't, you know, it's no fun if you only do this every once in a while to adjust a four jaw. But it's not rocket science, and I think Abom and a few others have some great videos about how to do that. So I'm not going to bore you with the details on it. But one thing that makes it so much nicer is this little Noga. This is an articulated arm. As you can see, there's just not a lot of room for the indicator to get in between, you know, on the on the table and in between the jaws. But I've got it in here and I've got it, it's probably plus or minus about seven thousandths at the at the um where the, the jaw position are. So that right there, that's two eighty to seventy six. 280 and what 284 okay so a maximum of about 10 thousandths of a variation and of course I mean look at the surface there it, nothing to it to have 10 thousandths of variation you could see where some big dips and bumps are on the indicator as I was moving it around the edge but that I've got it roughly centered now, and my game plan is that I'm going to take the the facing tool. I'm going to face off the top of the the table, and I'm going to turn the edge down just a wee bit, just to get it round. As you can see, about a quarter of an inch. This thickness right here is about three quarters of an inch, and the finished um, dimension is it calls for only about a half inch. So that's not a, a critical dimension here, um, but I, I'm going to turn this around and I'll face this off, and then I can take the tabletop out, flip it around, and I'll probably use some cardstock or something. So the the turned portion will be held in the jaws, and the unturned portion will be sticking out, as will be the uh, ba the center of the the base, and that's the part that gets bored for. The little stem that I showed before. So I'll probably, it's getting kind of late now, I'll probably just face off this part and turn this round so that I can flip it around tomorrow night, turn the remaining edge, and then uh, bore, center bore the, um, the center part right there for the little stem. And the whole idea is it's not exactly how I would like to do it, but I don't have. To, I'm, I'm thrilled I can do this in the four jaw and not have to bolt it to a faceplate. So I think this will be fine. Um, what I'm, I'll get the outer diameters close to six inches. I'll probably leave them just a shade over six inches, probably I don't know thirty thousandths over something like that, and then I'll do a final pass f w with the stem part held in the in the lathe and just do it at a slow speed and just clean it off do a final pass to clean it off if that makes sense I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep you guys posted as I make progress here but that's the general idea tilt it back there and I hope that's informative to you and I will keep you posted so this is part three of the George Thomas pillar tool project